Project 2025 isn't just about the ultra-conservative policies that Donald Trump and his allies are preparing for a possible second term in office. It's about how they're going to implement those policies. During his first term, Trump often grew frustrated with senior federal government employees who prevented him from acting on his worst impulses and refused to carry out some of his most extreme ideas. He called his bureaucratic detractors members of the so-called deep state, which is an ill-defined shadowy entity that he's vowed to dismantle. He and his Project 2025 allies already know how they'll do this, and it largely involves an objective or a directive known as Schedule F. It's a plan that would radically transform the federal bureaucracy and allow Trump to install loyalists all across the federal government. Now, in this regard, Project 2025, which, as you know, I have right here, quite literally picks up where Trump's first term left off. On October 21st, 2020, just two weeks before Election Day, Donald Trump signed an executive order that created a new classification of government workers that would be known as Schedule F employees. That sounds rather harmless, but in reality, Schedule F was an effort to drastically reorganize the government in order to give the president more power and control over the federal workforce. Anyone deemed to be in a policy-determining, policy-making, or policy-advocating position would be reclassified as a Schedule F employee. As per Trump's executive order, Schedule F employees would lose their civil service job protections, which meant that replacing them would become a lot easier. They would essentially become political appointees, hired and fired at the will of the president, and possibly replaced by somebody who may not be equally or better qualified, but who won't question the Trump administration's agenda or method of doing things. It's a system designed to reward loyalty over expertise. James Shirk, who served in the Trump White House and drafted the executive order, said that, this t that his team, quote, estimated that the order would apply to about 50,000 employees in the executive branch out of 2.2 million. That's positions that could potentially be lost by people loyal to the Constitution of the United States and given to Trump loyalists. Some say that might even be a conservative estimate and the number of affected employees could be higher than that. But because Joe Biden defeated Donald Trump in the 2020 presidential election, because elections matter, Schedule F never took effect. Two days after Biden took office, he revoked Trump's executive order, writing that not only was the creation of Schedule F, quote, unnecessary to the conditions of good administration, but also undermined the foundations of the civil service and its merit system principles. But Schedule F remains a cornerstone of both a possible Trump administration and Project 2025, and reinstating it is a top priority for both of them. Here's my plan to dismantle the deep state and reclaim our democracy from Washington corruption once and for all, and corruption it is. First, I will immediately reissue my 2020 executive order restoring the president's authority to remove rogue bureaucrats, and I will wield that power very aggressively. I will wield that power very aggressively. Kevin Roberts, the president of the Heritage Foundation, the group behind Project 2025, has echoed Trump's sentiment. Speaking of the career civil servants who would be most directly affected by Schedule F, Roberts told the New York Times earlier this year, quote, we want them out of there. We want Schedule F. Meanwhile, Project 2025 is already preparing for the opportunity to get rid of Schedule F employees and replace them with their own people. In fact, Project 2025 has already pre-vetted thousands of prospective employees to ensure that they are ideologically aligned with the group. The qualification under the Trump administration is not going to be that you are better for the job. It's that you're ideologically aligned. Project 2025 has gone as far as to create an employment database that's been described as a, quote, conservative LinkedIn. For Trump and Project 2025, personnel is policy. They learned during Trump's first term that you can't do everything you want to do if you don't have the right people to help you carry it out. They are not going to let that happen again. This time around, they're making extremely sure that the right people will be in the right positions to carry out the exact agenda that they want to fulfill. 
Joining me now is Olivia Troy, former Homeland Security and Counterterrorism Advisor to former Vice President Mike Pence and member of the new voter outreach group Republicans for Harris. Olivia, great to see you again. You know, one of the things I learned from my parents who were involved in politics when I was very young is that in a, in a, is that in a, in a, in a functioning point of the civil service is that you can elect different leaders and they can come and go, but the system stays relatively steady because experts, generally speaking, who are not driven by ideology, keep the, the government working. Project 2025 wants to to undo that largely. Yes, exactly. And look, at someone who was a civil servant for a very long time. I started my career in Republican politics. I was a Bush appointee back in the day. And then I joined the civil service and the intelligence community. And I served under the Obama administration. I got to tell you, Ali, like the way that public service is painted now that is just not the reality. Not once did the political, you know, partisanship enter my mind when I was working on a policy that was for the greater good of Americans. I served at the Department of Defense. I served at the Department of Homeland Security, the Department of Energy. Every single day, my colleagues got up every single day and worked on policy and helped to support the American people, even in crisis situations, which is really what the focus of the civil service does. And it's expertise on how to make everything run so that when we have to respond to a crisis, we know how to come together. We know how to actually like discuss the options and we can push out the relief that is necessary for Americans if that's one of the things that, that is needed. Right, because if you're thinking about a, a terrorist attack or you're thinking about a, a FEMA in a hurricane or, or NOAA in predicting weather, you, you don't, people have partisan views. Everybody votes the way they vote, but you want those kinds of policies to be established on the basis of expertise. There, there's, an estimate, there's an estimate out there that 50,000 federal employees could be affected uh, by this reclassification as Schedule F employees, which means you can, at that point, they can dig through either your social media or the fact that you were a Republican at some point or a Democrat. In this case, it's Republicans wanting to get rid of Democrats. But they would they can replace all of these positions. Um, and by the way, I don't know if you need to replace 50,000. You just re let a few thousand go, and it sends the message to the rest of the workforce that you're now working for me, not for the government of the United States of America. Yeah, I want to be very clear about this, Ali. This is Schedule F order... Uh, this was drafted, uh, as you said, in, in 2020. I saw the draft when it was being enacted early on in 2020, and that is when they started to replace uh, national security experts on the National Security Council with loyalists. And, uh, you know, I was warned about it uh, from my boss and from the National Security Advisor to Vice, former Vice President Mike Pence. I was told to keep my head down, and I was told that in the end, hopefully, I would be okay. And the reason that that was stated to me was because they knew that I was committed to serving in the Homeland Security and counterterrorism role in a very factual, matter of fact way. I worked day and night to ensure that I was presenting the facts and also responding. We worked, I worked on the disaster relief that you mentioned whenever there was a hurricane or floods or California wildfires. But the concern here with the Schedule F was that in situations when Trump did not want to send relief to a blue state, if those people that are serving a nonpartisan way right. get replaced by a loyalist, that is what's at stake here, is that it will no longer be a government working for the greater good of the people and providing this relief. Uh, it will be a, oh, we're not going to send relief like they did during COVID, right? I lived that firsthand. Where they were playing partisan politics, I will be very clear, Mike Pence was not. But we had no control over what was going on in that Oval Office where they were doing partisan politics when they were sending supplies and relief to states based on how they had voted. And I, I think that is a very dangerous thing here. And I think that Americans really need to understand that. Because when, let's say Donald Trump gets upset with a Republican governor along the way, and he's back in the Oval Office, I can assure you that his vengeance will overtake in the moment and he will forget about the fact that these are just Americans in need right there. And he will be vengeful and he will keep that relief from going out. And it'll be the partisan loyalists in charge that are going to be dictating 
responses and policies like that. And I can name numerous scenarios across the board where that is likely to be the case. Yeah, it's important for people to understand because I think the civil service is an abstraction to a lot of people who don't work in the civil service. But to understand that it is designed by design, not a partisan uh, a body, by a, a partisan workforce is really important. This should be like go and hug a civil servant week just to understand that they do their job. They have political opinions. They're, they have a right to have political opinions and they and they vote. But when you're working for the American people, it should be expertise over ideology. Uh, thanks for, for giving us a window into this one, Olivia. It's always good to see you. Olivia Troy, former Homeland Security, counterterror and intelligence official, among other things, in the U.S. government.